Hi, this presentation is about uh, mathematics in the Bible. If you Google mathematics in the Bible or do a YouTube search, you find most people talk about um, Bible codes or number patterns in the Bible. I don't want to do that. I want to simply concentrate on algebraic expressions that you find in the Bible. And particularly the one I want to have a look at is exponential decay. Now we'll take an example of exponential decay. The simplest example probably is radioactive decay, but the trouble with that is it's just too perfect and it misleads you into thinking that it will always be that perfect with every decay pattern. Perhaps the best one to have a look at is um, the decay of a drug in the human body. If we give a person some medicine to take and we test how much is left in their bloodstream, you'll find it drops off in an exponential decay pattern. Now, I'm going to suggest that we start by giving the person 128 mils of the drug. The reason I picked that is because it really easily divides by two. And we'll say that this drug has got a half-life of one hour. That means that after every hour, there is half as much drug left in the system as there was before. So if we give the person 128 mils after one hour, there'll be half as much, 64. After the next hour, there'll be half as much again, 32. After the next hour, there'll be half as much again, which is going to be 16. And we can draw a graph, a bar graph that represents that. You can see after one hour, there's 64. After two hours, 32 mils. After three hours, there's 16 mils. After four hours, eight mils, etc. It's going to be better if we replace each of those bars by a dot. My dots are slightly off there. Sorry about that. But even better, if we replace those dots by a smooth curve drawn through them, like this. And the advantage of that is that you can now calculate not only how much drug there was at each hour, but fractional portions of an hour in between. For instance, how much drug was there at two and a half hours? Well, you just go to two and a half on the horizontal axis, draw a straight line up to meet the curve, then across to the vertical axis, and you'll read off there was about 22 mils of drug left in the person. You can express that as a mathematical formula very simply as y equals 128 times a half. The little t represents how many hours went by, that is how many times to multiply by a half. So after one hour, it would be 128 times a half once. That's 64. After two hours, it would be 128 multiplied by a half times another half, which would be 32. After three hours, it'll be 128 times a half times a half times a half, which is 16. And so it goes. Normally in mathematics, we don't use the multiply sign because it looks too much like an X. And mathematicians are sort of, they love Xs. So what we do is we leave the multiply sign out and we simply write it as 128. There is actually a times, we say times, a half to the power t, simply meaning 128 multiplied by as many halves as we have hours to consider. The fact is that the curve is never absolutely pure. It is never exact. Just imagine we fed this medicine to a number of people. Some people, their gut has a good uptake rate and it absorbs the medicine very easily. Other people, they might have a liver which extracts the medicine more quickly than someone else. And you end up with sort of a scattered plot, but you can still recognize the pattern. An exponential decay curve is still obvious, but it's sort of now in a scattered pattern. All we do now is fit what's called an exponential decay regression curve, which just means trying to get a curve of best fit, one that fits as well as you can, the dots, with as many dots above the line as there are below. So it would look something like that. And you can still see the pattern of the exponential decay, but there are some dots above, some below, and then we take that curve, extract its formula, 
And in this particular case, we get y equals 80.541e to the minus 0.226t. You do not have to understand that formula. You don't have to worry about it. It is just a pattern that represents an exponential decay. Okay, now to the Bible. This is a list of the ages of people recorded in Genesis after creation. Uh, Adam lived for 930 years after creation, and when he was 130, he had a child, Seth, who was born 130 years after creation, and then he lived for 912 years. Then when he was 105, he had a child. So we can record all of the people that were actually listed for us in the first books of Genesis. You list them all. There they are. The first one was Adam. We've listed that zero as meaning he was born at the time of the creation in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and he lived for 930 years. And his child was born 130 years after creation, and he lived for 912, etc. And uh, basically, you can list them all, the ones that are given in the Bible. I could have, in fact, just Googled these. I actually went through and got them all out of the Bible, but I should have just Googled it because they're all listed. And then you can plot a graph. Along the horizontal axis is the years since creation. Along the vertical axis is the age of people. And the first thing you'll notice is that for the first thousand or so years, everybody lived roughly about the same time. They all lived around about 800, 900, 900 to 1,000 years. One poor guy died at 780 years or something. I reckon he got hit by a chariot. But basically, they all lived the same, and then they started to drop off. And the lengths of lifespans got less and less and less. What happened to cause that change? That red line represents the flood. Now again, I don't care if you take the Genesis stories to be figurative or you take them to be literal. The fact is that when you have a look at what is written there, you are told the lifespans were all roughly the same, forming a flat line until the flood, when suddenly they all started to get smaller. These are the values after the flood. These tell us the ages of each of the people that lived after the time of the flood. For instance, the first person, 56 years after the flood, they died. That was Noah. He was 601. The next one, 156 years after the flood, he died at 438, etc. And then you plot them. And you'll see, I hope, immediately that that pattern is exactly the same type of pattern we got with the drugs in the human body. It's an exponential decay curve, exactly like the one we've been studying. Yes, it's scattered, but there's no mistaking that it's exactly the same type of curve. You can fit a regression curve to it, that is a curve which has as many points above and below the line. There's an example of a few, trying to pick the one that which is most suited to the data of the graph. And this is what you get. You get y equals 75 plus 700 e to the minus 0.0041t. You don't need to understand or worry about the formula, just the pattern. It's exactly the same pattern that we got for the exponential decay of the um, drugs in the human body. The 75 is arbitrary. And the reason it's there is because if you don't put it there, if you look what happens to the graph if humans go on for 100,000 years, um, the age spans get less and less and less, and eventually it will predict people live to about one year old. The 75, and this is not a fudge, this is standard mathematics, the 75 is an arbitrary value chosen to represent the age of people now. Uh, some people live in their 80s in the uh, more advanced world. People in the developing world might only live in their 60s, but I've chosen 75 purely as an arbitrary value, roughly to represent our lifespan now. So it's arbitrary. You could change that to any number you like. There are only two ways this law could have occurred in the Bible. Number one, the events really happened. What this is describing 
is a real occurrence, just like the drug in the human body or radioactive decay or the decay in air pressure as you move up from the Earth's surface. This is a real happening or the person who wrote these numbers knew the exponential decay law. This is the same pattern that you'll see in all natural decays, radioactive decay, medicines in a mammal's body, decay of electrical currents when it's switched off, drop off in air pressure as we rise above the Earth's surface. The law was first discovered by Leonard Euler in the 1700s, some contribution by Newton and a fellow um, called Napier as well, but uh, basically that was the age in which it was discovered. So how come this was known in the Bible 2,000 years before Euler discovered the law? The writer of the Bible, I believe, didn't know this law. It just means that he was describing a real natural phenomenon. This decay in lifespan really happened. And what you are seeing here is a true record. It's possible that you might not believe that, but you might say, well, the person who wrote down the numbers knew the exponential decay law. Well, again, this makes it something outside of human experience. It makes it something which is impossible for humans to have plotted. So basically, two possibilities. Either it really happened, or 2,000 years before Euler discovered the law, that law was known. It makes me believe that the Bible is something special outside of human design. Want to talk about it? There's my email address. Enjoy.